In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take a look at basic title editing in the new interface. If you're relatively new to PowerDirector, we may show you some tools you didn't know you had. If you're an experienced user, we might show you some things that you've overlooked or forgotten that can make your title editing efficient, fun, and creative. So let's look at some basic title editing in the new interface. I have this video on track number one. So let's see what we can do to add a title to this bird having lunch. I'll move my playhead back, click on the titles in the upper left corner. Now I have three categories. I have my favorites. That's any title, whether I created it or Power Director had it, that I marked with a heart. So any of these are ones that are, are marked so that I can use them and find them quickly. That's the only purpose of, the, of that one. The second is custom. Custom titles are titles that I have designed, and you can see how this one works, uh, that I can use over and over again in any particular production that I may have. That's what a custom is. And again, I can mark a custom with a heart to make it one that I can find easily. The third is the general category of titles that are available in PowerDirector. There are hundreds to pick from. Let's start out with a very simple, boring one and see some things we can do with it. So I'm going to click on the subcategory called Plain Text and then click the default My Title and drag and drop that down into track number two. Now the default always is it will put the title at the center of the screen. I'm going to click on the Edit button above the timeline to get into my basic title editing. And these are the options that we have. Let's look at some of the fundamental things that we can do. First of all, we want to change the text on the title. You can do that in one of two ways. You can highlight it, like I am here, and say, Launch, Carriage Return is Served. And I've edited the title but you can also edit the title in the box in the upper left corner. Sometimes I find that useful because it's easier. I'm not distracted by the background. I'll, I'll take out the carriage return and I'll add another one and I'll put today. And so you can edit it in one of several ways, either using the box or using the box on the preview screen. That's the content. So let's say we want to modify some of the content. I'm going to change this one feature to the default. Next to the content, we have an option that allows us to control the font family. If I click on the down arrow, I'm going to see lots of fonts, but here I have lots of fonts that are not native to my language. If you click on this funnel here, that will filter it. I can choose between English, Japanese, traditional or simplified Chinese, and Korean. So if one of these suits you better than English, pick them. I'm going to limit it to English and now I will not see the other language fonts in my dropdown. I also can control the font size. When I look here, I see there's some gaps. For example, this says 28 and the next one is 36. What if I want 30? There's two ways to get to 30. I can drag across the letters and type in 30, press enter, and I have 30 but I can also use the up and down arrows that will change it one point at a time. There's 31, 32, 33, or I can go back down. So you can customize the, the font size in one of two ways. Then we have the, the one that controls the color, the face of the font. I click on here and I can choose a basic color. If I have a custom color, I can do that. I can choose a color from over here and decide I want it maybe this shade of purple or this shade of yellow. Or I can click on select from screen and I'll pick the color on the head and use that and it will match it there. And then I can adjust anything I want any way I want. Let's click on that one and click on OK. There are two ways in which you can change the position. You can change it by working on the preview screen by taking the mouse when it gets the four-headed arrow and moving it to the location where you want. You see the XY values here at the bottom have changed. Or you can change the, these values by using the up and down arrow or typing in a different value. I tend to find I use the mouse more in changing the values. Now the scale, likewise, you can change by changing these values with up and down or just typing in a different value. Or I can change the scale by hovering the mouse over any of the corners 
and then dragging and making it larger or smaller. If I'm going to go back to the original scale, I'm going to use Control Z to get back to where I was to start with. You can also change the rotation one of two ways. You can hover over any of the corners of the title box and drag and change it that way. Or you can change it by changing the number here, up and down. Or you can change by using the rotation ball. And I'm going to go back by using this because it will snap when it gets to pure horizontal back to zero, which is nice. Now there is a tool here to change it, but I don't know why it's there because the other controls work so well. You can also add bold here, or you can make it bold and italic or italic. Now you have left, centered, or right. The default is centered on titles, but if I want it left aligned or right aligned, I can do that. Let's go back to center. The next feature is distance between the lines. Let me add a third line here. And now I have three lines. Let's see what happens when I mess with the line spacing. If I click down here, I can go and make it farther and farther apart, or I can make it negative. Lots of people don't realize you can also use negative spacing to tighten it up. So I have a 12 and a 14, minus 12. Let's see if we'll take a minus 13. Yes, it will. So you can customize the line spacing simply by typing in the number if you don't see a number you like. The next one is kerning. That's the distance between the letters. You can also use this one here to expand it or make it smaller. And especially with kerning, the choice between 0 and 5 is not always what I want. So I'll type in a number. I'll type in a kerning of 1. Press Enter. And now it is just, the space between letters is just slightly expanded. So you don't have to settle for the numbers you have there. So that's your basic controls when it comes to these kinds of features. Let me go back to zero. The next is presets. Presets give you options. There are 20 ways in which you can customize the letters by clicking on a preset. And it will overwrite everything you've done in terms of the look and feel of the letters. And I do control Z if I want to get back to what it was normally. So you can choose between these and then modify them. Most of your preset modifications will be in the advanced mode. That's a different tutorial. The next option, I don't know why this is in the middle. I would have put it at the bottom. It's going to be seldom used. It's kind of cool, but you can add fire to your letters. Or you can add colorful neon. And you can modify in several different ways. If you don't like them, you turn no effect on goes back to your default. You have some other controls over the face of the fonts. And the font face is not checked. The font's there, but it's invisible. When I turn it back on, I see it. You can blur the letters, which I don't know why I would do in most cases, or change the opacity, make them all, all transparent, all the way off is that way. Next one is border. I don't know why the default is red. Uh, let's try a different border. Let's try something that's white. Click on OK. I like white or black. It usually works pretty well. When you're working with borders, here's a tool. If, if you want a hollow letter, all you have to do is turn the font face off. And now I have hollow letters with whatever color border I wanted. Uh, borders also, you can change the size. You can make them very fat or very modest. And you can use the up and down arrows or type in numbers. Blur is the same for borders, and you can also make the border opaque to make it less uh, noticeable. The next one is shadow. The default for shadow is black, which I think is a good choice. You can choose the distance of the shadow. If you make it a long ways away, it doesn't seem to make much sense to me. But you can tighten it up very close to the letters or make it farther away if you want. Uh, these are options that you can choose. You can change the opacity, and sometimes a little blur on the shadow is a nice thing to do. The blending mode, we won't deal with that. Normal is what you see on the screen, but you can see if I try different blending modes, I get very odd results depending on the background behind the letters. So normal will be the most common for us. Now there's another way to modify letters. If I, if I have this selected, I can, I can change an individual letter. Let's take the V here. Now when I hover over it and highlight it, 
I see a pop-up box. This allows me to do many of the features I have on the left side. You see some of the changes that I can do, but I can also take that pop-up box and ignore it and just do what's on the left side. So let's take that V there. Let's go back to the top. Let's change the font face only for that particular letter. So I'll take that one and let's make it uh, this one here. So now I have changed the font face for that letter. I can also, for that letter, I could do it for a word as well. I can change other features if I want. I can make it smaller. I can change the shadow. I can turn the border off. Uh, I can do all kinds of things inside the same title to make a word or a letter different than the ones around it. So that shows you that you can individually treat the characters in your title. You don't have to treat all of them the same. Lots, lots of times that might not be something you want to do, but you have that capability. If you like what you've done and you want to save it, I'm going to do Control Z to undo some of the things I've done to that little V and my word there. Let's see, let me get back to normal here. There we go. Let's say I want to save this. What I can do is click on Save As and give it a title. I'll call this uh, 000 and click on OK. Now, when I go into my custom titles, I have this that I can use in the future any way I want. So let's see what that looks like. We'll deal with animation, by the way, in another tutorial, but you can animate how the title comes on or off the screen as well using this particular basic feature. So let's close it out here and let's look at my custom. And here's my 000. And so I could take this and drag this down elsewhere and edit it even more if I want to. Uh, so I can save all the work I've done for future use. So that's a basic look at the new interface and the, the core controls for basic title editing in CyberLink PowerDirector.